Hello folks, Matthew Peterson here, trainer at Pragmatic Works. Welcome to episode four of the Power Platform for Educators. And in this video, we are going to show how to send out birthday emails to your students. Now, the idea is anytime a student has a birthday, we don't wanna forget about it. We wanna send them a nice email. I wanna show you how it's done. If you're like, Matt, I'm not doing anything with emails or, or birthdays. Well, this is a great flow setup still. Anytime you want scheduled emails to be sent out based on certain dates. So let's go see how to get it done. Before we begin, if you are interested in learning more about the Power Platform, please go to prag.work slash mat40 where you will get 40% off our on-demand learning subscription, which has access to over 100 different courses. Let's get on to the video. All right, to start this off, I just have a SharePoint list here where I've got a few pieces of information. The name of my student, their birth date, and then the student email address. Now, I'm using the same email address for all of these because I want to show you the final results. Uh, but this could be an Excel file. I'm just using SharePoint list because it is so easy to get created here. So I just have a date column. This is a text column where I put in the email address. And then I'm just using the title column for the name of my student. Now that that is there, what the goal is going to be, because today is March 18th, when I run my flow, I should get two separate emails, one for Jack and one for Layla saying happy birthday. All right, so here we go over on the Power Automate side of things. I'm gonna go over and do what's called a scheduled cloud flow. So I'm gonna click right here to do a scheduled flow. Then I'm gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna call it my daily birthday email. Then I just need to choose a schedule here. So if I want this to run every day, I'll just come down here and say every day. Choose the start time. I want it to get there before they get to school. So I'm just gonna come on down and say 7.30. And then from there, I'm just gonna hit create. So now my trigger here is going to be a recurrence trigger. Uh, now, uh, this is the new modern designer. Uh, I'm actually gonna go flip this over, go into the classic designer here, just in case you're not as familiar with the new designer. I think this one's nice, it'll get us where we need to be. And I'm just gonna collapse this so we have a little bit more room. So this is my trigger. So this is gonna run every day at 7.30 in the morning. So now I need to put in another step. And my next step here logically is what I want to do is I want to return the list of all of my birthday email record, not my email records, but the birthday records that are then going to make out this email. But I don't want to return everyone, only return the ones that have a date equal to today's date based on that birthday column. So to do that, we're going to be putting in what is called an OData filter. So let's see how we get it done. So the first step here is I'm going to choose an operation and because I'm using SharePoint in my case, uh, my operation is called get items. So I'm going to search for get items and then I'm going to choose get items right here. And then I like to keep up with what I'm doing. So I like to do my renaming here. So I'm going to keep it get items. But what I'm going to do just to give myself a note, returning records with birthday of today's date. The next step is I need to point it into my SharePoint site address. So in this case, it's going to be this site that I have here. And I have a list called my student birthdays. Now from here, I need to go into my advanced options because I need to put a filter statement so I don't get every single record back. Now the way that I'm going to be doing this is using on my SharePoint list the birthday column. Now, just so you know, if you're using SharePoint list, uh, sometimes you see the display name of a column, but that's not the actual way we write it when doing our OData filter. So just in case you're doing this for a different idea and you're like, how do I get that actual column name? Easy trick here. We click on our settings. We then go over into the list settings, which will then give us a, the settings of our list. And what we do is we go and find our actual column that we want to filter over. So in this case, it's my birthday. And then once I click on it here, up at the top in the URL, that is the way that it's going to be referred to anytime you want to put an OData filter in. So this is just called birthday, no spaces, and a capital B. So now that I have that, I come on over. I say, okay, I want to filter this data down. And what column do I want to do it over? In this case, it is my birthday column. Now there's a whole bunch of different OData filters out there, but the one for this is I'm looking for an exact equal. So I put in an EQ here. Then I now need to make this dynamic because it now needs to reference the date that this flow is running. And I need the data formatted correctly. Now, because I know I have a SharePoint list column, uh, I know that the timestamp I'm about to return needs to be the two digit month, the two digit day, and the four digit year. 
because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write an expression that returns the current time by using uh, the UTC now expression. So the way that I write this expression out is I come on over to my dynamic content window, which is also my expression builder, and then I'm going to click on expression here. I'm just going to scroll this up a little bit. And what I want to do, if I just use UTC now, this won't work because it does bring in the actual timestamp, the minutes and the hours and the seconds. So I need to format this into the style that I need based on my date column. So over here, I'm going to start off with format date time. Now, when we write an expression, the next thing we do is we put in open parentheses and it's now going to give me the, the guidelines. So it says, hey, give me a timestamp that you want to format. Well, in this case, I'm just going to go with UTC now. There's other time functions out there that you can run, uh, but I'm on the East Coast, so UTC now is, is going to be picture perfect. And then I'm going to hit a comma, and now I need to put it in the format that I want. So the format that we need here is we started off with a single tick mark or your apostrophe, and I want the two-digit month. So I do two uppercase M's, dash the two-digit day, two lowercase d's, dash, and then the four-digit year, Y, 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 Y. Once I have that set up, all I do now is I just click on OK. So that is going to only return records that have a birthday date equal to today's date. Now comes the easy part. That's the hard part. The easy part is making the email. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come on down, add in a new step here. And the step that we're looking for is sending an email. So I'm going to choose send an email. I'm going to use my Office 365 uh, account here. So that's the one that I'm going to choose. Then I'm going to go to the two. Now the two, I don't want to hard code this. Uh, in fact, what I want to do is send it based on, if I go back to my home screen, I had that student email address uh, right in here on my student birthdays. So right here, I've got a column that's called student email. So over here, even though I don't see that dynamic content, I can click on add dynamic content. And then right from over here, I'm going to say use the student email value from the record that gets returned. Now watch what happens when I click on student email. Ooh, what just happened? Well, what this is doing, it's doing an apply to each. It says, hey, you are referencing a dynamic value, something from the record being returned. And in this case, because above it, it's get items, which means multiple records could be returned. It's saying, I'm going to look at each record and send an email to each student email address from the record. So if four people have uh, records that have a birth date of today, I will get four separate emails to be sent, one to each of those users. So that's why it's putting that apply to each in here for like, what just happened there? So once I have that in, I then go into the send an email step, and then I just make it whatever I want it to be. Uh, so I can say, uh, happy birthday. And then in the body, I can say, dear, and I have a column which had the student name, which I used the title column. So dear title, I hope you have a wonderful birthday. I'm going to just close that off with an exclamation point there. It can be any message you want it to be. And then I'm just going to come up here and hit save. So once this saves, and again, if you had more information in there, like how old they are and all that kind of stuff, you know, the more the better, right? But this is just basic to get you started. So now I want to make sure that it does work. So I'm going to click test up here. I'm going to manually test this because I don't want to wait till tomorrow at uh, whatever time I chose for it to run. And I'll click test and I'm going to run this flow. And if all goes according to plan, I should get two emails, but oh, it didn't run according to plan. And this was done intentionally. You're probably like, Matt, I want to be done with your video. Tell me how to fix it. Well, I am going to fix it, but it's a common misstep when doing an O data filter referencing a string column and you've wrote an expression that doesn't return a string. This is actually returning numerical data for me. So here's how we get it fixed. The way that we do this here is we go back to edit and then in the filter statement itself, in order for this expression to not be treated as numeric, but as a string, I come at the very end, put in an apostrophe and then right in front of it, put in another apostrophe. Once I make that change and I save it again, and I retest, this time I will hopefully get those emails here. So I'm gonna click on test. I'm gonna run this flow. It says done. It says your flow is running, so that's good news. So it did the get item step. And now if I investigate and I go to the apply to each, ooh, 
It ran two separate times. I can see the first one says happy birthday for Jack. I go to the next one and it says happy birthday to, once it loads up here, to Layla. And notice what did I just get? I got two emails just to prove it to you. Dear Jack, I hope you have a wonderful birthday. Here's my other one. Dear Layla, I hope you have a wonderful birthday. So as an educator, this is a really easy thing to make your students feel special that they have a birthday on today and that you have recognized them. Doesn't take much work on your end other than setting up this very pretty simple flow here. Um, now, this can be used for all sorts of other use cases when you're trying to send out emails based on like certification uh, expiration dates coming up or certain time project stamps to remind your students you got a project coming due in seven days or whatever it might be. Uh, but your next question might be, Okay, you had the data, Matt. You set it up on like the SharePoint list here. What if I have 140 students at the beginning of the year? I don't want to take the time to write all of this information in, but I still want to do this email thing. Is there a way to make that population of the SharePoint list easier to where I don't have to do it whatsoever? There definitely is. And that is going to be coming up in the next episode where we will learn how we can incorporate Microsoft Forms and Power Automate together, send out the form to our parents or students, When's your birthday? What's your name? What email address do you want to use? We'll have it populate the SharePoint list. Then that other flow that we already have set up, it is good to go. So hopefully you enjoyed, you learned something new. Again, this is Power Platform for educators trying to give you some easy things that you can start using inside of your classroom. I hope this helps and I hope you'd enjoy. And if that is the case, I will be seeing you in the next one.